This week sees the return of the money tree and we're giving one lucky viewer the chance to be £5,000 richer. As well as the cash, we're also giving away this amazing 42-inch Philips Essence flat screen TV with home entertainment system worth more than £2,000. For a chance to win all of this, just answer the following question. Which snack is most commonly associated with going to the cinema? Is it A, pizza, B, peanuts or C, popcorn? Call 09012 9303303. Calls cost £1 from BT Landlines. Calls from other networks may be higher and from mobiles will be considerably more. Or text A, B or C as your answer to 63360. Text costs £1 plus one standard network rate message. Or enter online for free at itv.com. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 10am on Saturday the 21st of February. Entrance made after the closing time will not to be counted but may still be charged. Thanks for joining us this Thursday afternoon. Still to come. Not a lot, not a lot, not a lot. Yes, right, thank you. Paul Daniels, <laughs> Debbie McGee are here, as if you hadn't guessed already. And we sample the delights of the Royal Drinks Cabinet. Now, though, to the things we do when we're young but live to regret as we slowly get old. Well, hopefully slowly. This week, the papers have been full of pictures of 19-year-old Peaches Geldof sunbathing on a beach in America and showing off her 20 tattoos. She's not the only celebrity who's decorated themselves with body art. David Beckham, Angelina Jolie, Fern Cotton and Amy Winehouse have all paid a visit or two to the tattoo parlour, but will they live to regret their actions? Here to discuss are singer and tattoo aficionado Pete Burns, Jessica Callan, who has a tattoo somewhere, and Nick Ferrari, who hasn't got a tattoo anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> At least, I don't think he's got a tattoo. Are we...? You're absolutely correct. You need have no fear. I'm tattooed just as God made me, just as I'm <laughs> sitting here now. Well, now, Pete, we can't say that of you, because you are a great tattoo fan. Now, what yeah. is it about tattoos that you like? I think I've got about 50 or 60, and each tattoo on my body has represented some occasion, like my husband's initial is my wedding ring. When we met, we got these butterflies that join up. I've got 43 stars, because 43 was a good age. I've got flowered feet. I just really like them, and I don't regret them for a second. You you're not worried that when you get older and your skin I gets am a old. bit... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bit but you've not got crepey yet, you know. Well, maybe without the scalpel I'd be crepey. I am old <laughs> and I, I've, I've not lived to regret them, no, because you can always cover them up by wearing more clothes. You just got to be warm for the rest of your life. Yeah, you got to be warm. I'm overheating today. I didn't want to show. I've got these these pharaohs here wow. on my arms Gosh. and all of these stars. Gosh, Gosh it's like sitting those. next to the Tate Gallery. It is, isn't it? And this is <laughs> butterfly. The when British Museum and the Butterfly. Wow. How, mm. Is it painful to have them done? It's absolutely agony to have them done. The only <laughs> form of tattooing that I'm against is makeup tattooing. A while ago, I had my eyebrows tattooed. It was the worst decision I ever made because they're an absolute disaster. Oh. Uh, I would advise anybody to steer clear of tattooed makeup. But as for tattooing your skin, to me, it's no more a thing that you do, do, you do regret than wearing yeah. jewellery. Yeah. Now, Jessica. You've, uh, you've got one. I do. You wrote about it in the paper. I did. I did. Well, in fact, I had one originally when I was 19 and regretted that. I now, thought tell, us, tell us where it is. It's, I'm sitting on it, to put it like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the butter promise yeah, On my right <laughs> size. No, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. But basically, I had it covered up three years ago. you think I've learnt my lesson, but I didn't. I thought I'd cover it up um, with the, our family crest, which is a griffin. Um, I had this beautiful tattoo done, about the size of the palm of my hand. Um, had it done in New Zealand. The came mythical back from beast. There. Yes. Mythical beast. Came back, showed my father proudly, who went, "That's very nice, dear, but it's the wrong type of griffin." <laughs> 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 so I got a meaningless tattoo now for the rest of my life. And was that painful for you too on your? On it your... was. You know what? Because it's the fleshiest part of your body, Ooh. but it absolutely killed. I lay. Face down on a, a tattooist. Your bottom <laughs> kills you. I, I have a bottom tongue. Would you advise young girls then never to do it? Do you think you should never have had it done? I, absolutely. I think really think hard if you want it done, especially if you have partners' names tattooed, like Peaches did, with her ex husband's name yes. tattooed, which is a bit regretful, I would have thought. Well, this, I think Jessica's right. This is, of course, the nightmare. And, and I'm delighted for Pete. He's got his 
partner's uh, initials or whatever it is as a wedding ring, that's fantastic. But some of us have to accept we don't always find our true love so quickly. So if you had various names from past lovers tattooed around your body, that's going to be a problem, because, you know, you might have a little bit of Claire around here, a little bit of Mary <laughs> around there, <laughs> Sarah up the back. Now, it wouldn't matter for me, because, of course, with my backside, I could give their middle names, their last <laughs> names, <laughs> home addresses and phone numbers. It really, it really wouldn't matter. But it's a, bit of, it's a bit of a dampener, I would imagine, for, for the amour or for the ardour, if a, a chap was to suddenly see a griffin on your bottom. I, I don't know how they would respond. Well, I mean, I, basically, if I'm on the beach, you can see it, yeah. which, obviously, I don't see it, so I forget it's there, but if I want to... Unless you're wearing a pair of Bridget Jones, is, then you'd be <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's yeah, true, that's quite. true. But you may come across somebody, one of your... Supposing you fell in love with somebody who didn't like tattoos, you'd have a terrible problem then, wouldn't you? Because, I mean, that's a case of love me, love my tattoos. Really? Even my, my, my stepdaughter, Jezebel, who I want to say hello to, and her grandmother, Ruby, they love my tattoos, and they're of a different generation. There's an 11-year-old and a 70-year-old love my tattoos. How recently did you have one done? When was your last one done? The last tattoo was an eyebrow tattoo that was an absolute disaster, an yeah. absolute disaster. I'm looking for somebody to remove those if it's well, possible. And your first one? How old were you when you had your first one? I think I was about 15 when I met my wife. So I've been married to a lady yeah. and now I'm married to a man and me and my wife got tattoos on our upper arms when we met. And then years later, after our marriage was over and I met my husband, we got tattoos when we met. He's got a huge tattoo all over his back. So it's been a colourful life in more ways than one, really. <laughs> yeah, and after each one, you, you, you tend to say it's the last one that I will ever do. And then something Is that just... partner or tattoo? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's very quick question. Of you. No, it's one of, the, one of those things that you think I'll never do it again, but then look what you went and did. You got a griffin no. tattooed on your body. They're, they're addictive. They are They addictive. are addictive. Yeah. And you yeah. swear that's it, never again, but I think I've learnt my lesson. Why did, but why were you addicted to Jessica? I mean, well, you say you're addicted. You had, you had, you had a spider, had didn't you? And it enlarged into the griffin. Yeah, and I decided so, to And then you said it looks as if you got the middle and bank tattooed well, on your exactly. bum. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. It looks like a Harry Potter character. It really does. I should get money off the uh, off the makers of the films <laughs> for that for free it's advertising. A Gryffindor house. Yeah. <laughs> Would you? So you wouldn't discourage, you know. Well, not children, obviously, but, but younger folk, one set of an age, decide. You wouldn't discourage them from having it on the grounds of it going all horrible later when you get all saggy. And well, everything. I think the most important thing to do is give it a lot of thought and choose something that's unique to yourself and find a brilliant, brilliant tattooist. Yeah. And if, of, of, of a certain age, of course, I would discourage a 14 or 15 year old. I would think that'd be a big mistake. There are wonderful transfers mm. and things now, mm. and they can do it with makeup. But at a certain point, I think you want to mark time. It's like getting your ears pierced. I wouldn't really approve of a, an eight year old getting their ears pierced till older yeah. it's just body adornments and it's a form of expression and actually I think now it's actually quite common most people have a tattoo somewhere yeah. have you Are got you... any <laughs> me no I haven't got any no nothing no my body isn't so much a temple more like a Methodist chapel but I still have <laughs> and, and no, no danger no, of you getting and, one and we're gonna have a generation I mean these people are so much younger than me but we're gonna have a generation of of old grannies oh, yes. who are going to have these tattoos. So I suppose it beats the child. What's saying, wrong with that? That's nothing. A hip, no, that's no. A hip it, granny. It, instead of saying, Ooh. instead of saying, you know, Granny, what did you do in the war? It'll be, Granny, can I see your bum, please? And see what... <laughs> I mean, it's, a different, it's a different life. The trouble is, they're going to be asking on the day that your butterfly has just turned into a moth. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks to Pete, Jessica, and Nick. Thank, thank you very you. much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Still to come on Thursday's AT show. Paul Daniels and Debbie McGee on why they're emulating Posh and Bex. We throw open the doors of the Royal Drinks Cabinet, plus there's another chance for you to enter our competition where this week you could win a state-of-the-art TV and £5,000 cash. See you in a moment.